This is the Free Hill Life Podcast, episode number four, and I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Hill Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. How's it going, everybody? We're back again. It's uh, the week of Christmas, and uh, there's snow on the ground most everywhere, and everybody's skiing, so it's a good time to be alive. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, the podcast last week with Taylor and uh, I had a really good time talking with him. Uh, awesome talking to the shop people. And we got another one uh, coming up with some some other people from the shop that I'm pretty excited about. I think to kind of just kick things off, a couple uh, news items to cover are we've got two Telemark movies out right now online you can check out. The first is by Mountain Grown Media called Our Family. You can uh, find it on their YouTube page and uh, I think their Facebook page as well. YouTube for sure though. Also the M Equipment has put out a movie called Back to the Roots. And I have not had a chance to watch all of these myself, but... I will definitely check them out and chime in on them in the near future, let you know uh, what I think. But from what I've seen so far from the trailers and the few clips I have caught, it's some awesome cinematography from both sides of uh, both sides or both movies. And uh, I'm super excited to watch them. And it's just cool that people are actually putting some telemark movies out right now, which is uh, super important. So excited about that. It's good to see some new media coming out and that always uh, fuels the stoke. And and that's always something I'm psyched to see is, is people putting that kind of stuff together. Next order of business is the 22 designs links have finally started shipping out to shops. I know we've gotten some here at the free Hill life shop uh, and taking care of most of our customers that had uh, pre-ordered that stuff. I'm sure other shops around the world are also getting them at least within the last three weeks, two to three weeks. So that also means we'll be able to ski on these and start getting some reviews going and talk to you guys about that a little more. I skied on that links a few times last year and there was uh, a couple things that uh, have definitely changed that they've improved on. So uh, we'll we'll cover that more in depth at some point in the future. And uh, I think that'd be good. But worth noting that they are out there and you're probably going to start seeing people skiing them. And probably get some more feedback from people about what they think, which will be cool. Next thing and the last kind of newsroom piece is we have announced a collaboration with Telemark Colorado, which is a cool little crew out of Colorado, obviously. And we are doing a thing called King of the Heel video competition. And uh, it's going to be a really fun competition that is kind of based on sort of a list idea, scavenger hunt idea, kind of where you need to compile different tasks on video and some are ski related and some are not, but should be a really good time and it's available to everyone. You don't have to be an amazing telemark skier to go shoot some movie or anything like that. It's something where you can shoot video and, edit it together on a a simple editing app and, and, uh, do a submission, uh, for the contest. So January 1st, we're going to be announcing kind of the task list, task list. (laughs) Obviously can't say that together. And, uh, you'll be able to watch, uh, or read about that on telemarkskier.com and we'll be putting that out there so you can, you can scope it out. 
but I'm super excited about that. That's always fun when we can put stuff together um, with uh, with other people out there and and little crews like that are really doing some awesome stuff to kind of promote stuff in their local communities. So can't wait to do that. Uh, this episode, thanks to everybody who's been writing in. Um, I think it's helping things kind of take shape and sort of figure out how how to approach these episodes uh since there aren't obviously a lot of telemark podcasts out there there's there's definitely an opportunity for all sorts of different variations of doing this stuff and i think keeping kind of a loose format at least for now is is going to be helpful in uh in a number of ways um obviously because sometimes talking to people is cool and getting to know uh, what people are doing out there and in, in their local communities. Uh, that's one thing I, I love is, uh, getting to know that obviously the history is cool. And obviously the one thing that people talk to me about all the time is talk about gear. We want to hear about gear. You guys are all gear heads out there and I love gear too. Uh, I think it's, a uh, an essential part of being a, a, a kind of a well-rounded telemark gear is to, to understand the gear at least. Uh, maybe not have to have every single piece of gear in your closet, but it is good to understand the concepts and what are out there. And more or less, I think that that's, a, that's definitely one of those important things. So the what I want to talk about today is kind of a more specific topic which is 75 millimeter versus NTN <clears throat> and right off the bat I think we probably need to take the verses out of 75 versus NTN because I think most of the issues that come up that I see are that versus cr- creates this idea that there's a competition between the two and I guess in some ways you could look at it like that but I think it kind of creates this sort of vibe and confusion that um, one's better than the other or one is superior and that may be that may be the case but that's kind of what I want to tackle today is just talking a little bit about that Had to caffeinate a little bit. Still kind of early here, so getting it rolling. So first off, let's discuss what 75 millimeter is. For those that are getting in, and I'm, I'm going to try and tackle this <clears throat> the best way that I can so that if you are a beginner telemark skier and you're just getting into telemark, I'm, I, I want to talk to you as much as I want to talk to all these gear nerds out there that have been doing this their entire lives and know all the little acronyms and words and whatnot. But this is, this is for everyone. And, uh, I think this will help us kind of find some common ground to understand this stuff. So first off, let's discuss what 75 millimeter is. It is the Nordic norm and it is the measurement of the toe of the boot. So if you see most traditional telemark boots, it's going to have a uh, what is commonly referred to as the duck bill of the boot because we have this square toe that comes off the front of the boot. Most times it will have three pins in the toe, and the measurement across that toe is 75 millimeters wide. And that Nordic norm has really been in use uh, since the late 70s in in terms of telemark use and kind of came into popularity with the resurgence of telemark skiing in the in the United States in the late um, in the late 70s when you kind of had people, uh, you know, usually it's commonly 
accepted as Crested Butte being one of those places where this resurgence happened. Uh, I believe most people point to Rick Borkovec as uh, kind of leading the charge in, in Crested Butte and uh, Dickie Hall and his crew out in the New England area also uh, kind of a hotbed of action in that era. These guys were all using the 75 millimeter Nordic norm back then with leather boots. Um, and that's what we used all the way up until plastic boots came into vogue or not even into, into vogue as, as much as into existence. So 1992, we get the Scarpa Terminator and also a 75 millimeter boot, but plastic. Up until that point, you had leather boots. Uh, you had leather with plastic upper cuffs, like the Merrill Super Comp. And then you had full plastic boots by 1992, all with 75 millimeter toes. Um, so we have used that 75 millimeter Nordic norm toe uh, for most of modern telemark history. And just to be clear, here's your little history tidbit that I wanted to throw in with that is telemark uh, equipment did not start with 75 millimeter in the 1860s. Just in case you thought it went that far back, it actually didn't. <laughs> and uh, I'll get into this, I'm sure, at some future juncture because one of the things I like to talk about is uh, a lot of a lot of old timers like to say that it's all about floppy boots and pins and skinny Nordic skis. Um, I'll just I'll, I'll lay the seed here that if you really go back to where it all started in Morgadal in Norway, which is the town in Telemark, which is a region of Norway, and you put the skis on uh, in Morgadal that those people were skiing on in the 1860s, uh, the skis were wider a little bit shorter, uh, the bindings were very powerful, and uh, they liked uh, stiffer boots when they could find them. But I will lay that seed for another time because it is a fascinating topic. But I just wanted to kind of point that out, that uh, that little history tidbit, that uh, uh, the 75 Nordic norm, the Nordic, the kind of old Nordic skis of the late 60s, 70s into the early 80s were that was definitely more part of that resurgence so hopefully that gives you kind of just a basic overview of what 75 millimeter even means what it refers to refers to the toe and that is what 75 millimeter is all about we still have plenty of 75 millimeter boots out there um Companies are still making 75 millimeter boots at this point. So NTN, NTN stands for the new telemark norm. Um, it basically eliminates the 75 millimeter Nordic norm toe. So your, your toe is going to look more, uh, closely to an alpine boot in the front of the boot, but it incorporates a, a, something different from a 75 millimeter boot in that it has what we call a second heel. So behind the ball of the foot, kind of mid boot, underneath uh, as, as part of the sole, there's a second groove that a binding can clamp onto. And so 
it fastens to the ski differently and it eliminates that duck bill and uh as some refer to the ntn second heel as the duck butt so there you go those are the kind of two slang terms for uh 75 and ntn so why the two exist is uh kind of like a lot of uh if you if you look into a lot of the history of uh telemark equipment there always seems to be this search for uh this holy grail idea uh what kind of bindings we're making uh and and just Im- improvement and which is great um we obviously want to improve. We want to make things better. We want to make it easier. Uh, in some cases, it'd be great to make it less expensive. Uh, that would be great. Get people into it, uh, beginner stuff, all the way to advanced. Um, but NTN, a lot of people don't realize, and I see this with people that come into the to our shop or people that I talk to in, in general, it has been going on for <laughs> quite some time. Um, I was I went back and before I sat down to record this, I was just kind of trying to brush up and remember exactly what year NTN came into existence. And from what I can find and and remember is it was this the 2005 to 2006 season that NTN became available and the so that that's quite a number of years ago almost almost 15 years ago and it had existed or the idea of creating this existed long long before that and I, I didn't really realize how far how far back it it was i thought it was kind of one of those things in the early 2000s you know it just kind of started happening then um i was actually on a uh, a backcountry trip with uh with my friend kim miller who's the uh kind of run uh, he's the ceo over at scarpa and uh he he's just been around for so long and and this was last winter and we just got talking. He he'd worked at Black Diamond and uh, had owned his own kind of telemark ski shop back in the day. And um, kind of talking to him, it was fascinating because the and I didn't realize how far the NTN conversation actually went back. And uh, it sounds like NT, the NTN concept really dated back even all the way into the '90s, maybe even mid '90s, which is mind blowing when you think about it. Cause it's 20, it's about to be 2020. <laughs> and, uh, that means that this NTN thing could be 25 or more years old in concept and theory, uh, but didn't really come to light till about 15 years ago. Still, that's, that's, that's a ways back. And so this idea of, uh, changing the 75 millimeter Nordic norm has, has been going on for quite some time. Um, so when this came out in 05, 06, you had, uh, one boot and one binding. That was it. You had the Scarpa TX boot and you had the Rotafella free ride binding. These were your only two options. So if you were an early adopter, of NTN, that is what you skied. Uh, there was four boot manufacturers at the time. You had Black Diamond making Telemark boots back then as well. Then you had the usual suspects, Scarpa, Crispy, and at that time, Garmont, which uh, would later become Scott. But back then, you only had the Scarpa TX boot and the Rotaf fell a free ride uh about two years i believe after the free ride ntn binding came out you had the freedom binding which was a more lightweight touring version uh of the rotafella binding 
So then you had two bindings and probably moving into two boots by that. Actually, I don't even think you had two boots. I, th I think it, there was still just the Scarpa TX, but you might have you might have had the TX Pro by that point. I'd have to do some research on that. Still, point being, there was only one company that was making NTN technology bindings and very limited amount of boots. Uh, you probably, around the time the Freedom came out from Rotafella, I think you started seeing Crispy coming out with their boots. Garmont would have come out with the Profit, and you started having boot options. Uh, Black Diamond never got in the NTN game. And so you had three boot companies making NTN boots and one binding company with two options. So it was pretty limited. And I was, I, I, th I remember thinking back then that was, it was kind of an interesting time because you didn't, you, you really, you only had these two options to ski on and three three boot companies kind of playing the game as well so it was kind of a strange strange time that way because I, I i don't really know what it was that that rotafella didn't want anybody else to innovate on the on the patent or i'm not i'm not exactly sure how that all went down behind the scenes but i think it was about seven years until Rotafella started going out and, and trying to find somebody to innovate on this. And they finally settled on licensing the technology to 22 designs. And they were able to create the outlaw binding. And I think that was an incredibly important move. And I wish it would have happened sooner. I think they did make the right choice in licensing that technology to 22 designs just because they had had so much success with uh the hammerhead the axle the vice um, they just done a really good job and had a really good following with kind of this durable industrial style design of telemark bindings and you know you could it it, it was obvious at that point that um you know, uh, they were the ones that probably should make the binding. And so that was good. And I'm glad that that's, that was the case, um, that they, they allowed him to do that. Cause I really think I hate to use the word saved, but I do think that that was a pretty incredibly important decision that Rotafella finally made to say, okay, somebody else needs to make something. And they, ch I think they really made a good decision by teaming up with 22 designs on that. Um, so really the key question here, now, you, now you've got a little history on the 75 millimeter, the NTN. The question is, which is better? And I can't emphasize this enough. Both of these boots are how we fasten our feet to the ski. That's it. Um, we really need to kind of look at this objectively. And uh, I, the biggest thing is you just need to understand it's how you fasten your foot to the ski. Uh, just like we, you know, I was mentioning kind of old school history. I mean, we telemark skiers have fastened their feet to skis in multiple ways over the course of history. So let's just think about it like that. 75 is one way to fasten it to the ski. And, uh, you know, even in that realm, it used to be a three pin binding that clamped to your toe. And then it went to a heel throw, various versions of that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the advantages of NTN versus 75 millimeter <clears throat> You could say step in, but we have actually had that before. Uh, there's several examples of step in and 75 millimeter over the years. Uh, 
There was the Lincoln binding. There was the Skyhoy binding. Uh, there was even a uh, volet kind of rolling heel that clamped on. So we've had step in with 75 millimeter before. Uh, you could say releasability, but we've had that as well too. Um, same thing, you had releasability with the Skyhoy fascinating binding uh, that was a fritchy black diamond collaboration back in the day. Um, you had the Rotafella TRP plate. You've had the Volley CRB. Um, and so there's various examples of 75 millimeter releasability. I'm not saying that they're all amazing. <laughs> Some of them are kind of funky, but we have had that in the past. Um, you could say NTN has brakes, but we've also had that in the past. Uh, Vole CRB had a brake system. Um, 7TM has had a brake system. Um, there's various brake systems that have existed uh, over the years in 75 millimeter. So some of those things have existed already, and I think that I just that's something important to point out is it's not like this stuff didn't exist, and now all of a sudden we have NTN bindings and everything was solved. What NTN does bring to the table that I think is the most important thing, and it's taken me probably a decade to really understand why this is important, is that NTN brings to the table customization. And why this is so important is Telemark skiers are an interesting bunch in the sense that when you clip into a binding, your boot and binding combo as a Telemark skier is crucial uh, to you having a good time. And why that is, is every Telemark skier skis differently. Some have a low stance, some have a high stance, some have a stance that's somewhere in the middle. Um, some people still like to flex at knee to ski. Uh, some people like soft boots. Some people like stiff boots. The combinations go on and on. Some of these combinations of style, I think, come from when you started telemark skiing. And, you know, if you telemark skied on leather boots, that era of telemark is is special to you, and it should be, you know. But some people wanted to maintain that uh, that type of flex and, 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 uh, feeling as they kind of moved on into, you know, plastic boots and whatnot. So I think the, the, the thing that I've learned owning the shop here in Salt Lake city and also just being around this stuff so much is what we don't want to do as we try to improve the system of the boot and the binding is we do not want to crush someone's style and so where ntn can be really great is the idea that you can help people customize the feel um, of of what they're moving into one of the things we do here at the free heel life shop is if someone comes in and they're like hey show me show me the the latest and greatest bindings and boots and all that if they're ready to buy boots, that is generally when we start talking about NTN. If they're not ready to buy boots, um, and this happens all the time, somebody has a, a great pair of uh, their their last pair of T races, or uh, they've got their Garmont boot that they really like, you know, and it's still in good shape. They didn't ski a lot the last five years or something, and it, you know, their seventy five millimeter boot is in great shape. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk bindings and, you know, maybe find an improvement on their binding. Maybe they're on a G3 Targa and they're looking for something a little more, uh, substantial, you know? Uh, so we'll move them into like a 22 designs vice or an axle binding, something that's got, um, some of those precursors to the customization where you can change the pivot point. 
you have different spring options that you can do. So it's not always time to move to NTN. And and I want to be very clear about that is sometimes it's financially not uh, the right time for people. And sometimes the feel of it, it's, it's scary, you know, to move from one to the other. But if you are going to do it, we generally find that the best time to move to NTN is when you're in need of new Telemark ski boots. That's really the best time because you're already going to drop the money on the boot and it's financially more viable for you to own an NTN boot moving forward than it is to own a 75 millimeter boot. And this is because in my opinion, there will never be a new 75 millimeter binding ever made. If there is, I will be extremely surprised. Like if someone actually makes a new one, um, in my opinion, uh, we have the best 75 millimeter bindings that have been made. Um, and you know, I just, I think it exists. So if you're going to get a new boot, that's when we probably want to start talking about, okay, this is how my, (laughs) I'm going to have more options to fasten my boot to the ski in the future with an NTN boot. And, uh, that's kind of where we lead people down there. So anyways, the, the customization aspect of it is, is crucial. You guys, the idea that if you are coming from a, let, let's say you are going to buy that boot, you are going to jump into the NTN world. Um, the first question that, that we're going to ask you is what is your 75 millimeter setup? Cause what I don't want to do, uh, as, as someone's friend, or if you're buying something f- from our shop or uh, reading an article about this or or listening to a podcast is I don't want to mislead people that, hey, you should just buy this NTN stuff because it's the latest and greatest. In most cases, if you just out of the box give NTN to somebody and they have a long history of telemark skiing, they are 75% chance going to have a poor experience because somebody doesn't know how to teach them about customization of the binding and the boot combination that they're going to put with that binding. And what I mean by that is if someone comes in, let me give you an example. Somebody, somebody who is a 22 designs kind of long time, 22 designs binding user maybe even back to the Russell rainy days, uh, into the hammerhead and into the hammerhead and then Axel vice, you know, once it became 22 designs, those people understand if they understand how their bindings work, they understand that they had adjustable pivot points. And I, I know that might be confusing to somebody who's just getting in. So we'll definitely I'm going to try and do some videos on our YouTube channel with that a little bit more, the difference between pivot point and spring, uh, spring stiffness. Uh, but for bear with me as I kind of explain this, if you're a hammerhead user, a vice user, those are, those people are very easy for me to go. Oh, cool. You're, you're on your 75 millimeter stuff. Uh, what boot are you on? Okay. You're on a, a Scarpa T1. That's amazing. Uh, what position do you ski your axle on? Oh, you ski on position one. Are you on the standard spring? Oh, okay, cool. So now I know you're on, you have a neutral pivot point being in position one on the axle. You have the standard spring stiffness and you've got a T1. That's going to indicate to me sort of how you like your turn to feel. Uh, and from that point on, I can look at the NTN bindings and start coming up with combinations that are probably going to work best for you in terms of the boot, transitioning you over to a boot that's going to work. And also, how are we going to set the springs um, on that NTN binding so that 
there's less of a transition and you're just gaining, you're gaining, you know, lateral stability. Um, you're gaining step in, you're gaining these great features, but you're not sacrificing your style. And that's really the most important aspect of this. And I did not understand this 10 years ago, you know, um, I started doing, uh, I was actually running one of the first, uh, when the freedom came out, I was running the Rotafella, uh, NTN demo tour and we did, you know, half a dozen stops across the country. And man, I look back now and I think how terrible that was because there was so many times, I mean, basically I didn't understand the customization aspect of this and, uh, you know, people, we were, we were used to stepping into a telemark binding and there we went. And I think had we understood that better, I think people would have had a better experience. And I can't tell you how, you know, you, you read about this on the internet or you, I'll meet people on the slopes and they're like, I hate NTN. <laughs> and uh, it, it sort of makes me laugh because uh, I probably, I'm, I'm probably personally at fault for someone having a bad experience with that at some point because you know, we just put someone in a binding and said, Hey, go ski. And then they'd come back and be like, nah, I don't really like it. And I think it's because people don't understand that there are these customization aspects. Now with that said, not everybody is going to be an NTN, uh, skier. I think there are a few cases where it just doesn't feel right for people and there might not be enough customization aspects to get them to come across. I think, uh, if you ski a G3 Targa have a very low stance, for instance, uh, the aggressiveness of the pivot point and the lateral stability of this binding sometimes not always, but that is probably one of the larger transitions. Um, you know, cause you're skiing and you love, which is totally fine a binding that is from like 1999. It's an era. It's a, it's just a different feel and, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but the transition over, uh, is, can be a little more dramatic cause you're, you're spanning a much, a much larger kind of swath of, of technology and, uh, whatnot from, from a Targa to an outlaw X or, a Majo or something like that. But with that said, Outlaw X and Majo have some, uh, some amazing features on them that allow us to, to span that kind of history of bindings and kind of get the, the feel that you want. So, uh, a couple things I think that are worth noting that are difficulties that I see in the future about NTN. Um, the first is that NTN currently doesn't support, uh, small and large. Let me, let me say that it doesn't support extra small in terms of, I think it 23 Mondo, uh, is the minimum. Like that's the smallest boot that will fit in a small NTN binding. And size 30 Mondo is the largest. So at some point, I think that we need to broach the subject of there probably needs to be an extra small NTN and there probably needs to be an XL NTN. Uh, otherwise, we, we're missing people. And if we're going to, if we're going to transition the way we fasten our boot to the, to the binding, to the, to the ski, it's going to be very, very crucial that we make sure everyone has, uh, boots and bindings that work. Uh, the, the Scarpa T2 Eco 75 millimeter boot goes up to a 32 Mondo and the, the, the Scarpa T1, for instance, only goes to a 31 Mondo. And I'm not saying people have, <laughs> there's millions of people that need, you know, need that sizing. But if we're going to keep the telemarketers that are in this, it's essential. And I think that XL 
is probably more essential than the extra small, but it's worth noting. And um, 75 millimeter could very well be something that's used like we do now for, for kids, you know, in that, um, you know, 19 Mondo to the 23. We don't have to span a whole lot there. So that's, that's kind of nice. There's only a couple sizes. So, um, you know, 75 millimeter could definitely live on for kids equipment. So I know we're getting pretty deep here. Uh, but that, uh, that's kind of my thoughts on, on NTN customization and, uh, kind of the versus mentality versus 75 millimeter. I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but I just want to mention it before we kind of close up shop for the day is the, it's important to note that within NTN now there's quite a few options. And, uh, one of the things that you need to know is there also is, uh, TTS, which is the Telemark tech system. You can use an NTN boot. Technically it doesn't use the second heel. So you could argue that it's not NTN, but it uses the tech toe on some of the boots. And then it uses a traditional heel throw, uh, cable system. Uh, Olympus mountain gear was the company that kind of started that off. They're based out of here in Salt Lake city. And then, um, now you have Telemark tech toe i'm sorry we have let me let me rephrase that we have uh ntn uh ntn tech so you've got majo which fastens to the set the second heel of the boot but it uses the tech toe as the front fastener more like an at binding one and now you have the links and these are of uh, these are two popular bindings right now. And uh, it's just another way to fasten to the ski. Um, I think there'll probably, this is probably an entirely different discussion <laughs> is to dig into uh, tech toe versus non tech toe. And uh, I know all you gear nuts are going to love that conversation too. So, um, we just put an article up on Telemark Skier. Uh, we had Craig Dossi wrote a couple articles about the possibility of uh, TTN, which is Telemark Tech Norm. I think it's worth noting. This is just something that's been kind of floating out there: is how to uh, should with this tech toe technology starting to happen within Telemark? Uh, should should we? Uh, standardize some of the 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 tech inserts and all that stuff i would encourage you guys to go read that it's on telemarksgear.com uh there's two articles about the telemark tech norm i don't think it's anything to worry about uh this you know i I see people commenting and saying oh you know i'm not going to go to ntn because what if this happens and really that's not the point i think the point is we 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 need to kind of all get in one group first uh, with NTN being the way that we fasten to the ski. We need to tackle some of these issues with sizing that I just discussed. Um, and of course we need to improve on, you know, the different aspects of the boot and whatnot. Uh, but there's all these crazy acronyms. There's all these crazy versions of, of, of stuff. And I think uh, I just wanted to mention that if you if you really want to geek out and kind of get into the the mind of this this whole thing out there with tech toe please go to telemarksgear.com read those articles kind of get into that but uh to kind of go back to the core purpose of this podcast today uh i hope that this helped you understand a little bit of history of ntn and a little bit of history with 75 millimeter. And the idea that these are, these should not in any way be opposing forces, um, or that you should feel hesitant about moving to an NTN boot 
when it's time to buy a new boot. Um, I would, I would encourage you to do that. And I know it's hard because if you're not by a place where you can try that stuff, uh, it can be difficult. And I completely understand that. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is if you're going to try NTN or move into NTN or consider, you know, you're, you're buying a new boot or whatever, uh, you know, you can call us here at the Free Hill Life Shop. Um, talk, make sure you're talking to someone who understands the idea of customizing the feel of that NTN and getting you into the right boot and binding combination and running you through the variations of it. And make sure the person that's letting you try it or selling it to you or whatnot, please, please make sure that they understand your style. Make sure that they understand what your 75 millimeter system looks like. Because if they don't understand that, then it is absolutely impossible for them to take you into the NTN world in, uh, in a way that is effective and in a way that's not going to compromise your style and all of the awesomeness that you've paid into to build your telemark turn over, you know, X number of years. So I hope that, uh, I hope this discussion helped out a little bit, you guys, and kind of helped us get into that basic, uh, NTN 75 millimeter discussion. I know it's something that multiple people have, uh, wanted to talk about, and this was definitely straight up gear nerd central podcast. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I've got, uh, in, in the previous podcast, if you want to reach out, I'm trying to get back to all the emails. Uh, you can email me at podcast at com. I would love to hear from you. Let me know uh, what you thought of this podcast and, and the other podcasts that, we, that I've put out over the, the last couple of weeks. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me where you're from and uh, where you're skiing and, and what you'd like to hear about in the future. Um, how you can support the podcast. Uh, you can read articles on telemarkskier.com. Uh, check out our YouTube channel, uh, Telemark Skier Magazine on YouTube. And you can always shop at freehealllife.com for your Telemark equipment. Feel free to call us here. You can talk to uh, us uh, during the week. And we're happy to talk to you about NTN 75 millimeter leather boots, old parts, uh, you name it. We, we just love it. We love every aspect of telemark skiing. And, uh, like I always say, it's the richest of all the, the snow sports cause it's the original. Thanks for listening today, you guys. And I, uh, can't wait to, uh, get out and do some skiing this week. I hope you are too. Uh, happy holidays to everybody. And spread telemark always.